end-of-the-world apocalypse stories have captivated people in the modern world over the last few decades, with themes such as alien invasions and zombie outbreaks being the most popular. While these are fun plots, they are fiction. However, our world has come close to ending in reality several times. Did you know that humanity actually nearly did go extinct twice in prehistory? Well, in this video, we will discuss these two events. Marine Isotope Stage 6 First of all, what is a marine isotope stage? Well, marine isotope stages are periods of alternating warm and cool periods in Earth's climate. At the time this video was recorded, scientists have recognized over 100 stages going back roughly 6 million years. So what made marine isotope stage 6 so important? Well, beginning 195,000 years ago, the global climate entered a period of cold and dry conditions that lasted for 70,000 years. In interior Africa, this shift triggered drought conditions so severe that much of the continent would have been uninhabitable. This is important because at this time in history, Homo sapiens were still strictly confined within the African continent. Genetic studies of modern human DNA tell us that at some point during this period, human populations plummeted from more than 10,000 breeding individuals to as few as 600. Basically, Homo sapiens became a highly endangered species that almost went extinct. This population bottleneck means that all humans today are descended from this tiny group of survivors. The result? Humans have less genetic diversity than chimpanzees. Keep in mind that there are over 8 billion human beings versus less than 300,000 chimpanzees. You might be wondering, well, how did that small group of Homo sapiens survive those severe conditions? Well, the surviving human populations had to move from the interior of the continent to the coast, particularly along the southern coast near Muscle Bay in modern-day South Africa, where the climate was more favorable, and they could rely on the sea for food as well as the vegetation on land. This had a profound effect on our species as it encouraged sophisticated tool-making and strengthened social ties and structures. The Toba super eruption was the second near apocalyptic event that could have ended humanity. This eruption occurred on Sumatra Island, Indonesia, 74,000 years ago. This eruption is described as one of the largest eruptions in Earth's over 4.5 billion year history. The eruption itself only lasted between 9 to 14 days, however, its effects lasted for thousands of years. After the eruption, the Indian subcontinent was covered in roughly six inches of volcanic ash, with remnants of ash and glass from the eruption being found in places as far away as Lake Malawi in East Africa. The enormous amounts of sulfurous gas that was emitted during the eruption caused the planet to go on a 1,000-year cooling period with a global volcanic winter lasting between six to ten years. This caused a large amount of the human population to die off at this time, creating a genetic bottleneck. Through genetic testing, roughly around the same time of the super eruption, a bottleneck of human genetics occurred, and all humans today are descended from a population of between 3,000 and 10,000 individuals from East Africa. The Toba eruption catastrophe theory says that the super eruption caused a global ecological disaster that destroyed animal populations, vegetation growth, and caused severe drought. This then devastated the human populations throughout the world, with the mass majority of surviving humans being those living in East Africa, where the effects on the climate and the vegetation was not as severe. Other modern-day animal populations, such as orangutans, chimpanzees, tigers, and cheetahs, also suffered a genetic bottleneck at this time. Shortly after this, however, humans did again venture out of Africa and begin their reconquest of the planet. Given that you are all watching this video today, humanity was able to survive both of these close encounters with extinction and able to become the dominant species on the planet. Unfortunately, however, it looks increasingly likely that the way our species becomes extinct will be at our own hands and not the forces of nature. Thank you.